fighters want to fight and the fight makes sense for boxing, it can get done. People were saying, oh, JoJo's running from Devin. He won't fight Devin. As soon as the fight with Ryan fell, JoJo raised his hand like he's always done. I'll fight Fortuna. I'll fight Ryan. I'll fight Devin. And nothing changes from JoJo Diaz. He's a throwback fighter from back in the day that's willing to fight anybody to give the fans, to give you guys the fights you want to see. We came up short tonight, but I'm very, very proud of him because he put on a hell of a fight. And Devin Haney, all hats, all, you know, all respects to him. Congratulations, a tremendous young fighter. But he knows, and he's going to learn from this fight as well because he was in a fight tonight. Now we'll pass the mic to Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. First off, I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity to let me live my dream and let me, you know, fight my first main event here in Las Vegas. We had a lot of fans out here tonight, man, and I'm very, very thankful for that. I'm thankful for you guys to be, you know, covering my fight as well. Thankful for my father, uh, for everything that he's he's been through with me. I know I'm a, you know, I know I'm a pretty wild boy, man, but I appreciate you always being there for me and protecting me uh, no matter what. Shout out to my son right there, my little baby boy, Zenith. I do this for him. This is this is uh, nothing to me, man. My son means everything to me, and I, I work hard, and I, I struggle, and I go out there and risk my life all for him. And um, I love my mom as well. I love all my team. Shout out to Kevin. Shout out to Daryl. Thank you, Golden Boy Promotions. Thank you, MTK, my advisors, for, uh, you know, making these fights happen for me, uh, for letting me live my dream, or for actually letting me, you know, fight the best that, that uh, boxing has to offer right now. Um, I thought it was a great fight. Devin, uh, Devin Haney, you know, started utilizing his jab, and uh, I was trying to dictate to the body, trying to break him down. It was an exciting fight. He, uh, he you know, he came to fight. I came to fight, and uh, I ended up coming short. But at the end of the day, uh, I think the five fans won. It was an entertaining fight for the five fans. Now it's on you. Questions? Thank you. What's next? I don't. Uh, yeah, vacation, man. I'm gonna enjoy my my Christmas. Uh, enjoy some time with my son. We had a really really hard training camp, a 12 week training camp, making sure that my legs were getting strong and making sure that my diet and everything was ready for this fight. Um, we had three fights this year, so I think I'm gonna take a break uh, from boxing uh, for a little bit, maybe take some time off, uh, and then come back. Hopefully, you know, maybe February or March or maybe even April. So. Um, I'm just going to talk to my advisors, MTK and Golden Boy Promotions, and we'll go from there. But like I said, this is this is not the enemy. I still want to challenge the best, and I still want to fight the best. So whoever, you know, wants to go in there and try to, you know, fight me, I'm willing to go out there and do it. Yeah, I mean, I, of course, uh, I thought the fight was closer than what it was. I thought I was landing effective shots. I thought he was dictating the pace, uh, you know, trying to utilize his jab. But I thought I was landing some good body shots. Uh, during those exchanges, I thought I was landing some effective body shots, which I thought the, the judge wasn't, you know, count, uh, counting. But like I said, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I'm just going to learn from it and just adapt from it and just get better. Um, I don't think he, I don't think uh, he was gonna you know come with I I thought he was gonna come with a different game plan. He actually you know sat, sat in the pocket a few times and was trying to exchange with me. Um, his punches I, affected me a little bit, I would say, but nothing to the point where I was hurt or anything like that. But it was. When, when a fighter like Devin Haney, when he's a boxer and stuff like that, they, they just want to put hands on you and make sure that you're feeling that pop or making sure that they're always in control so that way, you know, you don't engage with them. So I was feeling his shots a little bit, but I wanted to, you know, dictate the pace, and I was trying to as much as I can. But uh, like I said, he had a better game plan.
But I, I feel like maybe just box a little more, um, let him come to me, uh, move around, and then uh, on the on the inside to throw some more combinations. Um, my father was telling me to, you know, let my hands go a little more because I was having my guard up and I was slipping, moving to the side and stuff and having some good defense, but I wasn't being offensive as much like my father wanted me to do. And I think if I would have just, you know, just put hands on him a little more and then let my effect the shots, I think that would have probably, you know, been a different right, outcome. I just don't think he did enough, man. You know, he had Haney in the corner multiple times and just wouldn't fire. But I do want to see now Ryan Garcia. Uh, he has, yeah, I mean, he has good pop. I, like I said, uh, when you're fighting with eight ounce gloves and if you get hit with a good shot, I mean, I think everybody has some good power. But uh, he caught me with a good check hook one time, one round, and uh, it did, you know, not stun me, but it got me like, oh, shit, all right. He, he got me with a good shot, so I got to be ready. So um, I think he has some good pop. I, I think that uh, if he is able to, you know, land an effective shot on another guy, he could get him out of there. I feel good at 135 pounds. I think I'm going to stay at this weight. Uh, me and my team and Daryl Hudson, we're going to work on, you know, just getting better at this weight. This is my second fight at 135 pounds. I feel like I, I could be a lot better, uh, a lot more stronger here. So we're just going to go back to the drawing board and just, you know, look at the tape and look at what we need to do. I told him exactly how I felt after the fight. So we're going to work on that and just progress and get better off of it. My, my, my dad was like, risk it all, risk it all. You got to go out there and knock him out. So I tried to do as much as I can. I thought I had him hurt a few times. Um, man, it was kind of messed up, though, because I had a cut inside my eyelid. Um, and it's still right there right now. So it's making my, my vision a little blurry because the blood's going to my eyes. So whenever I was having those exchanges, I was nice some good shots. And then all of a sudden, my, my vision would go blurry. So Devin Haney, he's a smart, good counterpuncher, so I wanted to make sure that I was applying that pressure, but I don't want to get caught with any unnecessary shot as well because he's a good, he's a good counterpuncher and a good fighter as well. So I wanted to make sure that I was still applying that pressure, but um, <clears throat> not getting hit with any flush shot. So uh, I tried to do it my best that round. I thought I won the round, but it is what it is. I wonder where this talk is coming from that like Danny got, Devin Haney got a weak chin, like. He hasn't been dropped, and he's recovered well from being buzzed by Linares and by Jojo Diaz. Oh, absolutely, man. I want to thank everybody for, you know, uh, just being being there with me and supporting me. I felt like I had a lot of people here supporting me, and, um, you know, I think they, they see my journey, and they, they, they know where I came from, and they know the struggles that I've been through, so I'm able to touch a lot of lives, and I'm able to inspire a lot of people and motivate a lot of people, and, uh, I mean, the show tonight, I had a lot of fans here, and I'm very, very fortunate that I do have those fans because I want to be that influence on these people and let them know that uh, dreams come true because I did, been, I did go through a lot. I did go through a lot of mental illness. I did go through, you know, a lot of depression stages and stuff, and I was able to get out of that stage uh, through God and through my, my family and, you know, my son, thinking of nothing but positivity. So uh, I want to continue being that light to these people and continue on inspiring just everybody in general, the kids, uh, the youth, and just people like you guys, man. If you guys are going through things, if you guys are going through struggles, I want to make sure that I, I try to be, be that light for everybody. Two more questions so you can go eat, baby. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't think it was a huge factor, but I think it was a factor. He was able to, you know, keep me out at bay at certain times where I feel like I, I could have, you know, closed the distance a little more, which I was trying to. But uh, that, that reach advantage and that step back that he was doing was pretty smart. Um, and he's a good counterpuncher, too, so I don't want to get caught like uh, all these other fighters when they're just, you know, popping in and throwing in, and then he could just sit back and land an uppercut or land a straight right and stuff. So I wanted to, you know... Still apply that pressure, but that smart pressure, so that way I can break him down. But okay. like I said, he had a good game plan. One more cop in here. We got to go. Uh, Haney's outside waiting, so we'll give him his moment. Hey, Jojo, 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 uh, you were having a great performance. Um, and I thought the doors came loose afterwards. You said that you rose your stock in the feet. I agree. And, uh, you know, we need to see more fighters taking on tough fights, obviously. Do you think that maybe you showed the boxing world that a loss doesn't matter and that, 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, I feel like this doesn't define me. I mean, this is this is my career. I'm able. I, I want to, you know, continue on fighting the best. And I'm a type of fighter that if I lose, I'm gonna take my loss like a fucking champ. And if I win, I'm gonna take it like a champ as well. And just always just progress and get better. So I want to continue to until my end of career, continue on fighting the best fighters. And I hope I, you know, inspire these fighters too to make sure that. They know that if you guys take a loss, man, it doesn't matter. As long as you guys are putting on great fights and putting on great performances for these fight fans, that's what they want to see. They don't want to see this baloney type of fights just knocking out people in the first round or anything like that. They want to see fun, exciting, entertaining fights with the elites fighting the elites. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I hope that everybody, you know, continues on doing that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I want to continue on finding the best. And if Ryan wants to fight, then we can make that fight happen. But uh, we'll see what he says. Um, you know, Ryan Garcia, he's he's a drama queen, man. So we don't we don't know what he's up to and we don't know what he's going to do. So uh, we just got to, you know, play it by ear. And I'm just going to, you know, trust my team. And just if, they, if he wants to fight, I got to make sure that that contract's already signed because I don't want to pull it out again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Team Haney. And Matchroom, we'll do it again. Thank you. He went to the bathroom. I don't know, man. I think he can outbox um, Cambosos. By the way, I did get a chance to hear about Tiafimo Lopez and the um, tear in his esophagus and the air in his lungs. That's pretty crazy not taking anything away from George Cambosos and don't shoot the messenger, but that's pretty significant and something worth talking about. But yeah, it all it, it really seems like that we're going to be able to get to see Devin Haney um, and George Cambosos. <laughs> it's just like some stuff out of 2K. <laughs> down, um, down under in Australia. It seems like it really seems like George Cambosos wants it unless PBC throws an outrageous amount of money at Cambosos to have Tank Davis if they beat Esau Cruz later on today doing, on pay per view. I feel good. I'm just waiting on Pops to come so I can uh, start. He's got a new t shirt apparently. Now remember, they, Bill, they, when he comes in, I bet he's got a brand new t shirt straight out. Yes. Oh, look at him. He's coming in. Where is it? There he comes. <laughs> hey! By the way, take a time out. Like the video. Subscribe. But yeah, remember, uh, PBC threw all that money at Canelo just yeah, for the shot for Caleb Plant. Yeah, we'll yeah, they do the well, same thing for George Cambosos. Deal. All right, guys, I know we're, uh, we're live streaming this press conference as well. Um, firstly, I want to thank you guys for turning up this week. It's a tremendous turnout from the press. It's been a brilliant two weeks. Madison Square Garden last week, MGM Grand this week. Of course, we want to thank them as well. Um, really proud of Devin Haney, Bill and, and the team because I think, you know, probably a year ago, a little bit more, 15 months, we were struggling for a bit of direction. You know, I felt that people were avoiding Devin Haney and they didn't want to fight him unless they were overpaid effectively. And I want to also thank DAZN for not just investing in Devin Haney, but investing in the opposition to make sure we get the fights that we need. And over the last 12 months, he's gone Gamboa, Linares, and Jojo Diaz. That's the best resume of any lightweight out there in, in, in a recent year or more. And although we give respect to George Cambosas for the standout victory against Tiafimo Lopez, I really feel like this last year has been incredible. And I think we also need to remember that Devin Haney is 23 years of age. Um, and his maturity in the ring, his ring IQ is, you know, that of a 32-year-old in his prime because at times in that fight tonight through three or four rounds, for a lot of people it would have got very messy. They could have unraveled, but he kept his composure. He controlled the complete middle stages of, of the, the fight. And I know he won't be fully happy with his, with his performance, but it's just every time he steps in there, it's a performance beyond his years. And, you know, as a... A Brit promoting in America, I'm really, really proud that Devin and Bill chose us and believed in us because it means a lot to have such a great talent. I feel like the 
best young talent in American boxing as part of our team. And we are a great team, you know, down to Devin and Bill who do an amazing job, Ben Davison, all the training team, Church, of course, who is the standout star of, uh, of Team Haney. And um, I want to thank everybody, and, and especially the media, and as I said, zone as well. And I feel like he has an incredible future, of course. We'll talk about the, the next step, and, and for us, it's only one step, and that's George Cambosis. And I think we're one of the few that will go to Australia. Um, and when he does, I believe he'll become undisputed champion. And to do that on a stage like that and come back is the kind of move and the kind of fight that will truly make Devin a global star. So we're going to go to the floor for questions for the champion. Thank you. Now, I noticed that you invested in the body early. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do you think that took a toll on him? You know, like noticeably took a toll on him? Did it, did it cut some of his power off? Yeah, uh, first off, I want to start off by saying I want to thank God. I'm I want to thank my team, my dad, uh, Eddie Hearn, uh, Matchroom Boxing, DeZone, my whole team. Uh, it was a great training camp. Um, everyone played their part. So, you know, I want to thank all of them. And, um, to your question, yeah, uh, I knew that he was a, a southpaw, so the, part of the game plan was to, you know, hit him with the right hand to the body, and uh, I felt like I did that, and he, he was slowing down. I could hear him breathing late in the fight. He was taking deep breaths, so yeah, I do feel like the the, the body attacks uh, did pay off late in the fight, but uh, the ref kept warning me about hitting him low, but he had his, uh, his cup was was high like you couldn't even see his belly button that's how high his cup was so i wasn't really hitting him low but yeah i do feel like the body attack uh paid off Yeah, of course. You know, when, whenever the ref, you know, warns you, you know, more than one time, you do think that, you know, as you start to think like, oh, I don't want to do it because I don't want to do that again because I don't want the ref to take a point. Of course, you know. <laughs> Of course, you know, um, Eddie Hearn believed in me when, you know, uh, a lot of people didn't. So, of course, you know, I, I want to, you know, ha have my whole career with uh, Eddie Hearn. You know, he's, you know, done a lot for me, and uh, I couldn't thank him enough. Um, well, obviously, I mean... The fight with Linares, Linares hurt me. It was it was obvious that uh, I got hurt in that fight. But in this fight, uh, I wasn't hurt at all. Um, his pressure, his pressure was much more than Linares, but his punching power wasn't as hard. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, um, I, I definitely think that uh, I showed that I'm an exciting fighter once again tonight. Um, you know, some people say that all I do is run in there, but in times, I, st I, w I wasn't running at all. But uh, in there, we got into some great exchanges, and I wasn't shy to to exchange with him. So I think it was a very entertaining fight. The crowd was, was on their feet from round one and round 12. So, yeah. Yeah, he put on a great boxing performance. It wasn't all running. And I don't understand like how they say he doesn't have a chin when he hasn't been dropped. But this is an entertaining sport. Yeah, um, of course I always want to, you know, entertain the fans. I want the fans to be happy with uh with, with the fight that I put on. But uh, you know, styles make fights and sometimes, you know, you you fight different ways to to get the win. But I felt like I, I fought a very exciting fight tonight and uh got the win. Thank you, thank you. Um, I thought uh, I put on a good performance. Um, of course, you know, the best way to win in, in the ring is is a knockout. And I, hurt, I did hurt him a few times in the fight. 
But I went in there. Um, people forget that I'm still 23 years old. That's my third world, uh, former world champion in a row. Jojo Diaz didn't lose his belt uh, at 130. He, he didn't make weight. So he's coming at, off the biggest win of his career against Javier Fortuna. Uh, and he walked Javier Fortuna down the, the whole fight. So um, he has the experience. He's, he's, and uh, I just feel like he brought the best out of me. So uh, I'm happy with, with my performance. And uh, we got the win. So now we on to the next. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do agree with that. You know, the crowd was going crazy sometimes when he was just hitting, like, my arms or, or gloves or even missing sometimes. But uh, it's part of the game, you know. Um, at the end of the day, the, the crowd can't win the fight for him, and uh, the scorecard showed. Thank you. Yes, sir. Town business. Uh, I think, obviously, both come off tough fights. Cambosa's a tougher fight. Got marked up pretty bad. And uh, I think that, realistically, we're looking at probably something around May time. I mean, I'd like to see Devin take a nice break, get back in camp maybe early February. But also, the only other issue we have to resolve is the travelling issue. You know, see what happens with the pandemic. Right now, we can enter uh, certain parts of Australia with no uh, quarantine. That could change. That could improve. But really now it's about speaking to the Australian government. And we don't, we don't, by the way, rule out the fact of doing the fight in America or in the Middle East or anywhere. You know, it's the undisputed championship and that's, that's a big pull for many different regions around the world. But we'll explore all of those, present them to Devin and obviously present them to George Cambos as his team as well. But we don't, you know, it's not just we're packing our bags to go to Australia. That's, that's where George would like to do it we have to be represented properly in this situation as well and make sure it's the right position for Devin Haney to be in. There, there may be many options for this fight, but I, I think realistically, end of April earliest, but May is probably the time for the undisputed fight. Um, what is that? I don't even know what the franchise belt is. No, really, this franchise title. I don't even know what the franchise belt is. I don't, I've never even seen the franchise belt. <laughs> One thing that is really important about the French, and Maurizio Suleiman doesn't like me, and I respect Maurizio Suleiman, I love Maurizio Suleiman, but the situation is very, very clear. You cannot unify with a franchise belt. Therefore, it is absolutely impossible to be undisputed with a belt that you cannot unify with. And you guys have got to understand that. You understand that, Mike? It doesn't matter about the sanction fees. Uh, forget the sanction fees. I'm just saying that Maurizio will say George Cambos is undisputed. The other governing bodies, you cannot unify with a franchise belt. Therefore, you cannot... And I'm not saying he shouldn't be undisputed. We should have fought Lomachenko a year ago. And Devin, when, he, when we looked at a route for the championships, and this was another reason that actually it sidelined us, because I said to Devin Haney, who do you want to fight? And he said, Vasily Lomachenko. We carved out a route to go after Vasily Lomachenko for the WBC title. He became his mandatory. Top rank wanted to avoid Devin Haney, and they requested he be made franchise champion. Lomachenko didn't. And, and with all due respect, uh, when I do fight for the uh, Undisputed, I don't, even, I don't want the franchise title. I don't want anything franchise attached to me. At the end of the day, um, I will be fighting for the WBC belt, and uh, they can keep the franchise. If Cambosos wants to keep the franchise, go ahead. Well, originally, you couldn't win the franchise. Now it's changed plays hands three times. Uh, look, you know, Maurizio Suleiman does a, a huge amount for boxing. We won't always agree with him, and I'll always argue with him, but, you know, he, he, is, he does do a lot of good things for boxing. On this situation, it's just George Cambosas is not undisputed. He, he, maybe he deserves to be. Maybe, you know, Tiafimo did, but he's not. And it's the only way we can settle it is to make this fight. Um, of course, you know, I'm going, I'm, I'm definitely thinking positive. Um, I do think that George wants to fight. I think that he wants to test himself. 
Um, but at the end of the day, talk is cheap. We can say uh, what you want to do and what you want to do. But at the end of the day, if we don't make the fight happen, then, then what? We have to you know, make the fight happen, and then it won't be no more talk. And the fight is easy to be, to be made. He says he wants it. I say I want it. We're, I just fought. He just fought. So we're, we're both open. Our schedule is both clear to fight each other. So I think we're on a collision course. The, the one thing I'll say as well, come back to your question, is we also have options. Mm -hmm. And that's what's changed over the last year particularly. A fight with Ryan Garcia is a massive fight if he gets himself back together. Tank Davis is a fight he will take. You know, in time, who knows? T.O. Lomachenko's fighting in a couple of weeks. We just want to be undisputed. And, and for a long time, it looked like we were frozen out of everywhere. And now he's one fight away from being undisputed. But he has plenty of options as well. And what was your next question? Uh, you, you were, I, I was going to ask if you had a contingency plan, but you're Yeah, just loads of options. I've always felt... Don't forget that Ryan Garcia fought a final eliminator to fight Devin Haney. And again, you guys never really questioned him on that either. Thank you, Champ Side. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Matchroom, The Zone. Uh, and I want to thank Allah for uh, blessing us uh, with a great victory. Alhamdulillah. Um, Jojo Diaz came to fight. Uh, he, he, he came, he brought the dog, but another dog showed up. Um, we couldn't be more proud of Devin and uh, what Jojo Diaz brought out of him. Um, you know, Devin is a, a fighter that is continually growing right before our eyes, so we must be patient uh, with his process. And, um, you know, it was, it was excellent. He made the adjustments at the right time. And uh, like I said, I couldn't be more happier. Um, of course, you know, JoJo put up a hell of a fight. Uh, he didn't come to lay down. Uh, he he pl applied pressure, pressure in a way that Linares didn't. Um, he was uh, very relentless. So it's not so much as what uh, we could have did more without me looking at the tapes. It's so much as uh, what JoJo didn't let him do. And it's a, a you know, testament to him. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, it's been a tremendous run for DAZN. Like, I'm, I'm a DAZN guy. I, I, all I see week in, week out is pay-per-view fights. And I think to be an American fight fan, you've got to be a stock market trader or an oil tycoon to pay for all these pay-per-view fights week in, week out. You've just had two tremendous fights of the year in the lightweight division with all the belts on the line as part of your monthly subscription. And I just think the zone is the, the best blessing for boxing. I think it's the ultimate destination for fight fans, uh, the ultimate value for money as well. And they're investing in fighters. And they have, you, know, you have to have a plan across divisions. And I think when you look at the lightweight division, although we've made two tremendous fights, think of the fights that are out there. Like, these guys are so young. They can fight each other two, three times. You know, Tia Female will be back. Lomachenko could be back. Ryan Garcia, Tank. You know, and the beauty is letting everybody fight everybody. And honestly, I can't, like, for the last two years nearly, Devin Haney has been asking for Lomachenko, Tiafimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis. And he said, and Bill has told me, we will fight any of those guys now. That's two years. He was 21 when he was calling for those fights. And I'm just pleased to see him getting the resume now that he deserves. Because a lot of teams and a lot of managers and advisors, they, they don't want the tough fights. These guys want the tough fights, and they're, 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 they're willing to go out of their way to make it happen. Well, Devin wants the tough fights. Can you talk about that, Devin? Yeah, um, I want to test myself. I want to fight the, the best fighters out there, or the so-called best fighters in there, and it's shown. You know, any any guy that I've called out, and they, they answered, and... I end up fighting them. You know, it's never been uh, any type of confusion or, you know, me backing out. Any guy that I called out and they were willing to fight me, I fought them. You know, Jojo Diaz is an uh, Olympian, uh, full former Olympian. Um, he's 
former two-time world champion. He said, let's do it. I said, let's do it. We got the, we, we got the fight made, and it, it was simple as that. Same with Linares. Uh, same with whoever else. You know, I, w- I want to fight George Cambosos. So the fight should be easy to be made. I want to fight the best fighters out there. And um, it's obvious. And you guys got to respect that. You, I, I feel like you guys don't, you know, accept it enough and, and, you know, speak about it enough that I am willing to fight the, the best fighters out there. I'm not ducking or dodging nobody. I mean, listen, we, we came to the UK. I've never seen anything like it. We did a media day. I was, I was a bit worried. I brought an American fighter over. It was ages ago. It was over, well over a year ago, before the pandemic. And I was thinking, we'll do a media day. I wonder if anyone turned up. They were queuing down the street. I've never seen a day so busy. I'd actually like him to come over. Ben Algieri might be a bit close, but Chisora Parker in a couple of weeks, come over to the UK. They love him in the UK. We would have done a big number on the zone tonight with our UK subscribers, and they, you know, UK fight fans, very, very uh, knowledgeable fight fans, and they know Devin Haney's for real. Uh, I'm so grateful for for this opportunity. This is something that I've always dreamed of since a, a little kid. Me living in Vegas, you know, you don't know how many times I drove past the MGM or been to fights here at the MGM and just, you know, imagine myself here. And it was actually like when I was in the ring, like it was like deja vu. I swear, it was like it was crazy. I feel like like I did it before. Like I've been there. Like I imagined it. And uh, I'm so grateful um, to to be in this position, especially at a young age, 23 years old, uh, very few have, have done it at this age. And, um, you know, uh, I couldn't thank God enough for it. I have a couple more questions, guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, your prime normally as a fighter comes in your late 20s, you know, depending on the weight class. And he's 23. And he's been fighting a long time early on in his career in Mexico just because he was too young to fight here. Um, but now as I go back to the fights that he's, he's been in. And also, don't forget where he's been fighting. You know, he boxed at Staples Centre in front of 13, 14,000 that were there on the, the, the KSI night. He boxed, he headlined at Maryland as well. You know, he boxed at Madison Square Garden. He's headlined there in the theatre. He's headlined at Mandalay Bay. He's headlined uh, at the Hard Rock in Miami behind closed doors that time when we were in the pandemic. And now he's headlined at MGM. I mean, he's on a hell of a run. And when you look at, you tell me a young star, 23 years old, that's, that has the potential of Devin Haney. You know, and it's not, potential is about having the ability and quality, but it's also about having the discipline. And discipline comes through being consistent. And consistency is the key to longevity in anything. And there aren't enough fighters these days who have the consistency and the work ethic to have to last in the game. You know, I'm not sure if you're going to see him at 30. I mean, you see him. I don't, you know, seven years. Seven years. If you're fighting three times a year, it's 21 fights. So, I don't know. Listen, we'd, we'd love to... Uh, the, the, this is a very tough sport. The, the key is to... Achieve your dreams, achieve your legacy, make as much money as possible and walk away into the sunset. But I promise you, he's in boxing for the right things. He wants to make money, but he also has a dream to be a true great. Last one. Yeah, um, like I said before, 135 is not easy for me to make. Uh, it takes a lot of sacrifice and discipline that I'm willing to do for the big fights. Um, um, the biggest fight for me right now, I feel like, 
well, the most important fight for me right now, it may, may not be the biggest fight, but the most important fight for me right now is George Kambosos for the undisputed. This has always been a dream of mine uh, to be undisputed. And, uh, you know, that's a fight that I would love. But, you know, if I can't get the, the, the big fights at 135, uh, then I will go up to 140. And uh, my body's still growing, like I said before. I'm only 23 years old. Um, I'm growing. And um, if I can't get the big fights here, then I'll, I'll move up. But my main focus right now is undisputed. Uh, I'm no, I don't want anybody to think that, uh, you know, they can just wait me out and uh, then I'll eventually go up. No, I'm going to press for these fights uh, for as long as I can. But if it just these guys just won't fight me, then I'll go up to 140. Thank you to the media. Bill, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, WBC world champion. Thank you, guys. Man.